says me, and oh my goodness, we've now hit over 400,000 subscribers. I feel like every time we reach a milestone, I always like thank you guys so much, but I really do mean it and appreciate it. Without you guys watching my videos over the years, I wouldn't have been able to do so many incredible opportunities and meet so many incredible people and all the things I've done because of YouTube. So I really do appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Um, but before I ramble on for too long, I thought for today's video that we would do another reacting to my old videos video because I did one, if, I think it was last year um, in the winter and that actually did really well. You guys seemed to really enjoy it and I said I'll do a part two if you wanted it and you guys asked for it. Um, so I'll be doing that today because in the previous video, I think I only reacted to four or five videos and guys, I have so many more in the depths of the archives that none of you have seen before. And um, so I'm basically gonna sit here and embarrass myself. But before we do that, to celebrate 400,000 subscribers, I thought I would talk about some of my favorite videos that I've sort of done over the last year. And um, some of these videos weren't like the ones that got the most views, but that they're the ones that I really enjoyed making, the ones that I put a lot of time and effort into the editing, um, and maybe haven't got so many views, but um, I'll leave links to all of them in the description below. So if you're bored during quarantine, then um, be sure to check them out, have a little binge watch. It's always fun watching, you know, old videos of your favorite youtubers and seeing you know how different they are and how they've changed in age so again that's why I thought it'd be fun to do a reaction to my old videos okay so <laughs> I don't really know where to start with these this kind of list of some of my favorites but I think one of them definitely has to be when I took Casper to Hickstead that day just felt so surreal he just went straight up to the top of the bank he just trotted up there like he does it every day and he did wee and poo at the top of the bank so that was quite funny. We got some epic photos and the view at the top was just incredible so that was a really surreal day. Also I did quite a lot of travel videos last year and um, for example I went to Iceland so um, I rode Icelandic horses for the first time, experienced the Tolt which is kind of in between a trot and the canter and um, also did some touristy things over there as well and that was just an amazing trip, a really sort of more documentary style video I did for that one but I really do love it so please check that out if you haven't already. Um, also I went to the US last year as well tried western riding for the very first time i am actually thinking of maybe doing a video with all three horses trying to do like pole bending with them <laughs> even though i don't own any western tack because it's just not really a thing here in the uk which is kind of sad um just for fun so i also tried bow racing for the first time while i was over there that was amazing. I also went on some really cool trail rides in Utah and Colorado and both were just absolutely stunning. Um, also last year I went to Australia, um, thanks to you guys. Um, I also did a few little travel videos out there as well, which is really fun when I was on the Great Barrier Reef, snorkeling with sharks. But also while I was over there, I went to the Adelaide three day event and that was such a surreal event because it's pretty much if you could imagine a cross-country course a five-star cross-country course big fill-up fences but in the middle of a city with skyscrapers in the background just in like a park that was such a cool event if you can go would definitely recommend um i've also been to some really incredible horse shows and events and I've met you guys which has always been so much fun I love meeting you all um, such as Burley, um, Hickston of course, um, Liverpool Horse Show, Olympia and of course the Dublin Horse Show and Team Ireland you guys are a strong team there were so many of you so thank you so much to everyone who came to that meetup so last year I made quite a few cool video so I'll leave them down below again if you want to have a little binge watch during quarantine so now on to me reacting to some of my videos that I may be not so proud of and I'll probably cringe at <laughs> okay everybody 
I'm now all set up. I've got my headphones on, got my laptop here, and I've had a little look through at some of these videos. I haven't played any yet, but I've just been looking at the titles, and um, I thought I would play, to start with, one of my first vlogs. Um, because, thing is, with vlogs, I never usually go back and watch them, because even to this day, after so many hours of editing and filming, I still cringe when I hear my voice played back to me. And this sounds really weird, but like when I'm editing on my own, it's fine. But if anybody else is in the room with me when I'm watching one of my videos, I just sometimes have to leave the room because I'm like, no, this is this is too weird. Um, so I thought I would watch my vlogs because I don't usually watch those back. I like watching back like my progress videos, um, such as my five years with Casper video or like my anniversary videos because I kind of like to look back at the memories or my like year and repeat edits and kind of saw see what I got up to back um, during that year. So I thought I'd do a vlog, go into the deep end, um, major cringe. Let's go. Okay, so we're starting off. It's at my old house. I'm wearing some wellies and I'm wearing some pajamas and it's just my foot. Okay. Oh, it's a time lapse. Walking over to the horses. There's the old stable. Oh, me climbing under a fence. There's Mickey and Casper going around to the donkeys. Oh, it's a beautiful morning. Okay. We're just pausing it there because I have such a baby voice. I literally just said, oh, it's such a beautiful morning. <laughs> and I don't know, I just sound so young. Um, this does have no copyright music in the background. So well done, Esme. From a young age, she picked up on the no copyright on <laughs> YouTube. So that's always great. Let's see what else I do. Hi. Hello, Bruno. <laughs> I'm just saying hello, hello to the donkeys in my little baby voice to them. Still do that today. <laughs> okay, I'm opening up letting the them out. donkey stable, laying them out. Toby has shavings Toby, all lovely. over him. <laughs> so funny because I literally, as I just said, Toby's been <laughs> lying down in the stable. I literally, baby Esme just said, Toby, have you been rolling? So it looks like I commentate on the things exactly the same. I feel like this video, I think it was filmed in 2016, I believe. So four years ago, four years ago. That's a long time ago, guys. <laughs> Again, this is with the old stables that you guys have never really properly seen. Oh dear. Just I can't even really hear what I'm saying. I'm just Will muttering under my breath. Sense? When I was younger, I used to speak so quietly in my videos. And then in here's the feed room. You can just hear me go, here's the feed room. Bit of the messy side. And there's like the door clanging in the background. You just can't hear what I'm saying. But yeah, that, well, I've seen my feed room in worse states, but it was a little bit on the messy side, Esme. I'll give you that. Yeah. Oh, Willow. Pouring out the food. There she goes, having her breakfast. <laughs> Toby still makes that noise. Yep. <laughs> he still breaks oh, like that. Break me saying he can't break properly. Yep. You can't break, can you, Toby? My baby voice. Please, as we stop. Okay, Casper's having his food, covered in stable stains, as usual. Mickey also having his food, not covered in stable <laughs> stains. Mickey, you're actually clean for once. Well done. So, Mickey and Casper eating their food in their stables. I'll clean them out later. Oh my god, I... <laughs> my voice! Bruno's here. It's me, speak yeah. up, please, speak up. So yeah, they um they can go out. <gasps> the old so barn! So they can go out in the field. But Bruno would oh, rather eat he's my actually pajamas. eating my pajamas! Oh! Naughty! <laughs> I just like point my finger at him. <laughs> like, don't do that. They do like to chew, chew on stuff. So once I left my jumper just on the... Um, fence there and they okay love hearing stories about the donkeys chewing on things great there is me this was bef like when I was so shy like at school I was such a shy p person I would hate putting my hand up at less in lessons and things like that that would just terrify me so I'm very quiet when I'm vlogging I also I don't think I ever I don't think I started like vlogging with the camera like in my face like holding up my phone kind of like this or like putting on a tripod and talking to it so you just can't see my face it's just me like everything in POV like point of view like 
here are the donkeys, here's the food. <laughs> so um, it's definitely a very raw vlog you've gone for here, Esme, but we'll carry on, see what else is here. Chewed it to death. Have you been rolling in your stable? The trailer's out because, um... Ooh, <laughs> our trailer's in the background with our number plate in, so I probably will have to blur that when I um, edit this later, but there's some fluff on the floor as well. I think, I think I must have, it must have been molting season, I think, and I must have, like, given Mickey and Casper a groom or something. Probably Mickey's fluff, I reckon. I don't know, but that's where I used to tie the donkeys and the horses up on that little fence there with the baler toy. Okay, let's carry on. We went out to do some um, cross country the other day. Nice to know. Then we're nice going to know. out tomorrow as well, so just might as well move it out until Willow's done. But I'm gonna go have my breakfast. Okay, now. you go have your breakfast, girl. Yeah. Enjoy it. Oh, there's the pajamas again. Those floral pajamas. Love that. Just walk back to the house now, so I can go have my breakfast. Walking back to the house. And get changed into my riding yep. clothes. Yeah, you want to change out of those pajamas. Also, I don't know if you guys will notice this, but um, I used to have plain toast with just butter on in the morning for breakfast. So I'm a really weird person that like I don't I don't know why, but every morning I always eat the same thing for breakfast. But every year or couple of years I decide to change that one thing I have for breakfast every morning but if you listen really closely I think I'll probably have to take the sound off but I had the Sims 3 I think I believe playing in the background because I used to like playing on the Sims when eating my breakfast this was obviously at the weekend when I had a very leisurely morning if you're young not an adult yet then enjoy those leisurely mornings because believe me when you grow up Life gets tough. All right. So I'm back from having my breakfast. Yep, you're back. Finish that. Willow here has finished. Willow's hers. finished her breakfast. I feel like I'm just repeating Clean myself. Her bucket out. Okay. Now, there we go. You can go out now. My Willow. baby voice, guys. And I've now just cleaned out their buckets. Toby and Bruno's. And I can let my boys out. Oh, did I yeah. not give Toby and Bruno yeah, any food? <laughs> that was when they were fat. I just didn't feed. Obviously they had grass. Okay, so I'm letting Casper out. Casper's <gasps> mane's so long. Okay. Mickey's turn. There he goes. Mickey does not have that rug anymore. He destroyed it many years ago. Casper actually still does have that rug, but it's got multiple patches in. There's my curly hair. Esme, you're still in your pajamas. You lied to us. I, I can remember because that was my pajama top. Mickey does not want to go out into the field. Oh my Hi, goodness, Mickey. let's just pause this. Okay, so that bit, that patch there, oh my goodness. That was what we called the boggy bog bog because it was just a bog. So that patch of grass, it's not even grass, that patch of mud, it was just mud all year round. Like even in the summer, it would squelch underneath your feet. We tried putting wood chip there to stop it from being muddy. Like, oh my gosh, the amount of times I've got wellies stuck in that mud. We're trying to push a wheelbarrow and it just getting deeper and deeper into the mud. I really don't miss those times. Um, do miss playing The Sims in the morning, but don't miss the mud. Um, also, you can see on our button, one of my old lone ponies, Bradley, I don't know how I said this before, but he would rub his butt against that barn because he had sweet itch so that's why <laughs> there's dents in it um that barn is no longer there we now have our house there um so yeah that's quite funny but you can kind of still see the field where mickey and casper oh, are in now oh oh oh, oh we are pausing this because you can see my face for the first time in this video probably because i've just gotten changed um i'm wearing the teal blue i've been rocking the matchy matchy for a while um, my hair doesn't look too different. That was when I just had it on braids, so it was lighter on the bottom, but it was still quite dark on the top. I don't think I'm wearing any makeup, and I remember this really well, because it must have been April, I think, 2016, because I don't have my braces anymore, and it was like right at the beginning of April that I had my braces taken off, I think. So, yeah, this was just after I had my braces taken off. Okay. 
What have we got to say? It's a Sunday, you know. Wear my pajamas to the horses. It's oh my gosh, it's so do. weird seeing my old house. And now I'm gonna go get Mickey. Oh cool, we're hack. taking Mickey for a hack. Mickey's head collar. Got... Okay, we're pausing it again because, guys, people don't believe me, but I have been rocking the matchy matchy from the start. So we have the teal blue head collar. I'm wearing the teal blue top. We've got the teal blue saddle pad. And oh no, oh, oh no, it doesn't finish there because we have the teal blue stirrups as well. You know, you've got to match it all up. Also, Esme, that girth is disgusting. I miss riding him so much. He was such a fun little pony. There he is. So I've got Mickey. <laughs> I'm trying to vlog with here. horses, still struggling today. I'm taking him now. Who's that round the corner? <laughs> it's Mickey. <laughs> I love that little song I just made up. <laughs> I told you this video is just gonna be me embarrassing myself. And I feel like we've definitely got to that point. <laughs> okay, hey. so what else do I say about I Mickey? Oh, 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 oh. Even more matchy. <laughs> we have the blue grooming kit, the teal blue grooming kit as well. I still have this grooming box. But at the moment, I just put all of my lotions and potions and shampoo um, in that box and kind of store all my cleaning products yeah. in there. But, oh, it's so cute. Also, my brushes look pretty clean. I'm I'm give props to Esme for that. Groom. There we go. He does look a kind of shade of light yellow, but it's fine. It's the winter. I'll give you that. Pony as well. Oh, I forgot up. what he looks like with tack on. And we're you look so together. cute, Mick. Yeah. So cute. Oh so my goodness, so this was when I went for a hack with Scarlet and Cookie. I miss riding with her. If you didn't know, Scarlet has actually gone off to uni like six hours away. So unfortunately, I don't get to see her that often. I did catch up with her at Christmas, during the Christmas holidays when she was back from uni, which is really nice. So yeah, that's for everybody asking where Scarlet's gone. She's gone to uni. But um, yeah, hopefully catch up with her again when this is all over and I can leave the farm. Um, so yeah, let's continue. A little, little hack. hack adventure. <gasps> so cute. Oh. <laughs> so if you couldn't tell, Mickey definitely isn't a jumping pony. Um, there was a log that had fallen over over the path of the bridle way, which was incredibly muddy. You can kind of see that my stirrups are a bit too long here. I'm just, I'm like, this was when I was kind of getting a bit big for Mickey, but he's quite a stocky pony, you know. He could manage my weight, like my weight for um, for what he could carry was like fine. Like, don't worry, I wasn't putting too much pressure on him. Now I'm definitely too heavy for him and he's retired anyway because of his age and health problems and things. But anyway, I just kind of trotted up to that log and Mickey, this is how Mickey used to jump. He'd like trot up to something. He'd kind of stop and just like lift up his front legs and just kind of like launch. We have really loud, non-copyrighted, rocking music going on here, guys. So yeah, we've just got back from our lovely hat good Scarlet and Cookie. Oh, we met Mickey up is so cute. Now I'm gonna untack him. I do have such a baby voice. Oh my goodness, Mickey is so sweaty. Is so we literally said that at the same time. Yeah, oh my God. Okay. Sweaty. You don't need to say you're so sweaty so many times. Like molting. Oh yeah, that was definitely Mickey's like hairs. Kidneys, so he is molting. Don't you get ridden too often because you're an old man now. Yeah. Yeah. We literally said yeah at the same time. Oh my gosh. So I've just brushed Mickey off. He doesn't look too bad actually. Some water on him, just give him a bit of a wash where the girth and where his head is, and basically just all over because he was oh, so sweaty. Oh, Mickey's so cute. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna go low, Bet you he rolls. Naked. I can't remember you don't if roll. This, from this video. As if not you. But so I bet dirty. you he rolls. 100%. Like, Problems I just know my heavy. horse. Mickey will roll. Oh no, the music's back, guys. This is too loud. <laughs> turn it down, turn it down. Oh, yep. There he goes. Rolling. Oh my goodness. He's so dirty. He's so, so dirty. Please, no. I can't remember having to groom him when he was that dirty, but oh gosh, Mickey. Oh, it's later. Okay. Oh, you didn't film me riding Casper. Okay, that's fine. Mickey does look very posh in his rug. Mickey, you like never really see him in a cooler. So when I put him in a cooler, he looks nice. So he'll have his. He'll have his bucket tea so have his hard feed. I just said 
like, okay, so he'll have his bucket tea. So, <laughs> if you don't know what bucket tea is, <laughs> I can see dad behind the camera laughing. So, um, in my family, we have a few sort of words that we call things that isn't the actual name for them, but in our family, it's just part of our dictionary. So, hard feed for the horses, so they're like grain that they have in their bucket. We used to call it their bucket tea, because if you didn't know, I'm British, we have this thing called afternoon tea. Sometimes British people call dinner tea, if you don't have like an afternoon tea in the middle, it's very confusing. So we would call the horses breakfast or their dinner, we'd call it their bucket tea, because it'd be like their dinner they have in a bucket. I feel like that's a really long-winded way of explaining this, but it just made me chuckle because we haven't called it bucket tea in so long, so it just made me <laughs> remember a bucket tea. While I'm gone, while I don't have my dinner, while the hay's steaming, yeah. Okay, bye Mix. Oh, and there's my outro. A seven minute vlog, oh my gosh, I feel like I was watching that for 20 minutes, it's so long winded. Half of it, I was just like filming the floor, <laughs> so, um, you know, it wasn't a bad video, it definitely took me back down memory lane, you know, it's where it all started. Your first videos are never gonna be perfect. Do we have time to watch another one? I think we do. I think we do. What else should we watch? Ooh, which one's going to be the least embarrassing but the most entertaining? <laughs> going on to camp videos, I have an... It's, I think this is still up on my channel, which I'm quite embarrassed about. But it's Essentials for Camp. I might have to private this video <laughs> that I'm about to watch because I don't want people to like stumble across this and be like oh my gosh these are the videos she makes because this is so embarrassing and old okay number one we'll start off with well done Esme you're filming um your actual face so that is a good start um number two this was just like in the landing so the door behind me was actually my bedroom oh my goodness my hair guys my hair is something else. Um, this is when I had my, what I call, Tracy Beaker hair. It was when it was dark and then really bushy and frizzy. I do look like Hagrid. <laughs> that was also like when ombre was like kind of in fashion back then. That was when I was like slowly going into the blonde. I was like, I didn't want to commit 100%. Guys, this is me and today I'm doing a video on essentials that you'll need for your pony club camp or riding camp. I sound so robotic, I'm like, hello, today I'm going to be teaching you all the things I'm going to be taking to pony camp. And I, I, I'm just so quiet and so robotic and it just seems very awkward also. <laughs> I'm sitting there cross-legged, I look like I'm sitting in assembly. Caspi, when he's young, oh, his mane is actually looking quite neat, apart from that one tuft that he used to always rub out. Um, luckily he's stopped doing that now. I think it's because the old fencing we used to have, he used to put his head through and try and get the grass. Oh, my old wheelbarrow, RIP, my blue wheelbarrow. I got that blue wheelbarrow for my 10th birthday. That was back in the day when all of my friends for their birthday were asking for iPads and things, but no, I just had my heart set on this blue wheelbarrow because I wanted it to be all matchy-matchy and match all my blue things. So in a second you'll see all the blue things because I'll show you. So let's just skip this forward. Oh, Casper's buckets, all teal blue as well. Oh, I have a little morning and evening written on, written on them. Also, if you're wondering, those buckets have also died a sad death. Um, they're no longer used because they um, were broken many years back. Um, I still think I have that blue wash bucket though. I keep that in the trailer, so that's that's good. Something that my horses haven't destroyed. <gasps> have all my wash stuff in. That's also blue. Surprise, surprise. Oh, my blue grooming box. Um, all my blue stuff in here. I'm just kind of skipping through. And my other blue grooming box. So this navy blue one was the one that I actually sprayed silver and then I sprayed it grey. Um, so in there I have all of my... Oh, I have my old boots. Oh. I've got my blue, I've got two blue sprays, a stain remover, mover and fly spray, I believe. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five saddle pads here. I think I had one almost for each day. Um, I definitely was the person at camp that brought the most saddle pads. So um, they're all neutral colours as well. So I was very proud of myself that I could still be matchy matchy and wear different outfits, but neutral colours, my old boots, my old hat. 
This was back in the day when pineapples were kind of a thing, back in 2015, 2016. Um, so I had these pineapple flip-flops, but I can't believe I showed these on camera because like the plastic on it has worn away and peeled off from where my feet have been in it. Like these look manky. But if you do go to camp, it's good to have flip-flops because um, you don't want to get your feet wet when going to the showers. Here's the trailer all packed up. Oh my gosh, here we go. It's got all the blue things. Okay, guys, you haven't even seen it yet. Wait till we get to the back of my car. I have a blue suitcase, the exact same teal blue. If you couldn't tell, back then, that was my favorite color. A lot of my friends also had a lot of teal blue kind of gear. So I was so sad when I got to camp and everyone else had teal blue stuff. And I was like, damn, we're all matching now. And I was like, I thought it was gonna be so cool like rocking up being like, oh yeah, none of my stuff will get confused with other people because all of my stuff's blue. Everyone else's stuff was blue as well, so. Should we go for another old vlog? I felt like we'll go for um, Area Pony Club show jumping. Now I believe this is still on my channel. We start off, the first thing you see, I haven't even played the video, it's like the frame that you see, is my lilac shovel with poo on it. <laughs> no intro, nothing. Like people are just gonna click on this video and be like, bam, poo in your face. <laughs> um, okay, here's me. Also, this video is five and a half minutes long, so I didn't know about, I don't think even YouTube started doing the like 10 minute thing where you have to get your videos to 10 minutes. If not, YouTube just won't want to promote it. Um, but here we go. Me shoveling some poo. Oh, give it a little shake. Put it in the bucket. There we go. Oh, grooming Casper. Oh my gosh, let's pause this. Okay, so <laughs> Casper being a Connemara, being a native pony, he has the thickest mane and the thickest tail and these were my golf ball plaits. I've never been very talented at plaiting ponies manes, but you could definitely tell when you go to a pony club competition, just by looking at the horses and the riders, you can be like, yep, that girl there, she plaited her horse herself. She doesn't have equestrian parents. <laughs> that was me. So here are my golf ball plaits. This was before I used to thin out Casper's mane. He just had like the longest, thickest mane, but it was always that awkward length because he would have that bit that would rub out. So I'd wait for the bit that he would rub out to kind of grow a bit and then I'd cut it all the same length. So his mane would never fully grow out. So it was never really, really long. So I couldn't get away with being like, oh, he's a native, I don't have to plait him. Or do like a running braid or something. Um, but then it wasn't short enough that it looked good in plaits either. It was just like a, dodgy medium. Um, so yep, golf ball plaits. What else do we have here? Oh, you can see my face guys. We're, we're improving, you can see my face. There's the tack in the back of the car. <gasps> you can see little Caspi's ears. I forgot what it was like having horses with a trailer. You can see. So this is our um, third hand trailer, I believe. Um, so yeah, his little ears sticking out, it's so cute. Oh my gosh, there's me having my pet lunch on the way. I, I believe this is when we went to Felbridge. I had my little penguin bar in there. They, not gonna lie, I still have a few penguin bars every now and again, they are very good. I think they're like Tim Tams for people in New Zealand and Australia. Um, so here we are arriving. It'd be so funny if like there's somebody like, oh my gosh, I was in that old video, like in the background at a show. So this is when I used to compete. Um, since I've been doing YouTube, I have not competed. Um, I don't think, like obviously I was doing YouTube then, but this was like before I had 10,000 subscribers. And I get a lot of questions why I don't compete anymore. But it's just something I haven't really picked back up on after doing, um, so this was when I was, 14, 15, I believe. So it would have been year 10 at school. So this was the last year at school before my GCSEs, which are like the big exams you do when you're 16. So um, I basically, when I went into year 11, I stopped competing because I wanted to focus on exams. Then after that I had A-level exams, so I wanted to focus on them. Because a lot of the shows I went to, you'd pretty much like take an hour to drive there. You'd go there, you'd jump you around, which would like last a few seconds. 
and then you'd go home and it would like be like an hour to get home. You'd also have to like plat with Pony Club, make sure your horse is clean, your tack is clean and having a great, it takes a long time to clean them. So instead of going to competitions or shows, um, I thought it would be more wise for my time to have lessons instead, just enjoy riding, have the fun of it while I had the stress of exams because having the stress of competition on top of the stress of exams, it's just a very stressful environment and I have many stories about shows I've been to and parents at shows I've been to, but we'll leave that for another day. Um, so um, here we go, we're arriving at the showground. Casper's munching on his hay. To be fair, from a distance, his plaits don't look too bad. They are very golf ball-y and his forelock plait does look a bit like a unicorn because it's kind of sticking up a bit, but that's fine. Okay, here we go. Practice round. Okay, I'm going to have to turn that music all the way down because that's way too loud. So this was the 80 centimetres. Part of me wanted to do the 80, part of me wanted to do the 90. And I think retrospectively, looking back at it, I probably could have done the 90. Um, but I just hadn't really done many competitions before this. So I was like, oh, I'll do the 80. But I was kind of bummed because the 80 was in the smaller arena rather than the big arena. So I think the 90 was the first height where they did it in the big arena. Um, so yeah, there I go. I was so proud. I think we got clear. So Casper, um, if you didn't know, when I used to compete him, it would either be a major success or a major fail when I went to shows. So he either went clear, we went amazingly. Like Casper barely ever had poles at shows. Like he's a very careful show jumper. He doesn't like to touch poles. But if you do not set him up correctly, he will just like back off completely. Or if there's a fence that he just doesn't like the look of, he just backs off completely and as whatever you do it's very difficult to get him moving forward if he doesn't want to do that fence so i was very happy with him there he is having his grass a few of his plats have fallen out so i think i did have to <laughs> redo them before our next round so there we go oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> so um i was a very dedicated student when i was younger if you couldn't tell um here is me at a horse show. So I think I'd had my lunch or whatever. My, I let my mum very kindly looked after Casper, took him for a walk around the show, um, show ring kind of thing. Um, have a mooch around because Casper would get a little bit bored if he was just tied to the back of the trailer standing there. Even if he had hay, you'd have to take him for a walk every now and again. I have multiple very chaotic stories about my parents with Casper at shows and pony club. I do believe that Casper might have gotten loose at that show, but I just didn't include it in the vlog because we didn't have any footage and I didn't really talk to the camera much, but I don't know if it was actually that show, but I feel like that that's another story for a story time. I have so many story times about um, chaotic things happening at shows. So um, if you want to know what my handwriting looks like, this is what it looks like. Here's my um, French GCSE writing. Um, I feel like if you're French and you're watching this, please do not judge it. I did get an A in my French GCSE, so it must have paid off. However, I did get an A star on my Spanish. Oh, we can see my mum holding Casper in the background. <laughs> oh, thank you parents for taking me to shows. Oh, you can see all the trailers. Oh my goodness. Okay, so people don't believe me when I say British horse shows. If you do Pony Club or Unaffiliated, they are the busiest things on earth. Like this is like, this is like the overflow car park where it's just like another field full of horse boxes. Like you would go to a show for the whole day. There would be like a hundred people in one class. And if you were at the end of the class or if you were at the beginning of the class and you went round to the jump off, you had to wait like a whole hour <laughs> for the jump off. So that's why I got fed up with competing and didn't do it for a while. Um, also, I have a younger brother and my parents had to make sure that during the weekends they spent time with him and he didn't get dragged to horse shows every single weekend. So that's another reason why I didn't do a lot of competing. I'm doing a little bit of tack shopping, looking at all the stuff. Ooh. Just lots of head collars and lead ropes. I'm on a mound. Oh, I actually am on a mound. You can see, oh my gosh, there are so many horse boxes. 
alcohol as me need to learn to turn down the music. So this is the 85 centimeters. Oh, we really chipped in there. Casper was very honest at that first fence. That is one thing we used to really struggle with Casper is the first fence. Like I just really need to gear him up, G him up and really be like, okay, we're going. Um, he was, oh, he's so honest here. So yeah, we do quite a nice little round. Ooh, okay, we can see Esme's getting into the editing because the jumps that I think he looks good on, I slow it down. Okay, chicken flap. Bam, look at me go over that ox, sir. You are flying, Bubby. Oh yeah, my nickname for Casper, sometimes I call him Bubby. I don't think I've ever really talked about that. But he did very well over that double. He did get two strides in, but that's fine. He is a pony and very short strided. There we go. Oh, flying over that ox, sir. He actually looks pretty good for all. Oh, there we go. Oh my gosh, this is making me miss competing. Looking at all those horse boxes makes me not miss competing, but seeing this does. <gasps> His little ears are forward. Also, because it's Pony Club, we had our white saddle pad on, which again makes him look a really light shade of yellowy brown, but that's fine, like not completely white. But there he goes over the last fence. Oh my gosh, we take an absolute flyer, but it was very honest and went over. Here we are, grazing again. And uh, I think I have one more round. Oh no, that's it. I remember this day very well, because <laughs> this shows how... Um, <laughs> what my parents like with competing. So, um, because this is like a pony club competition, um, if you, your team, if they all went clear, you would get through to the next round, which is like regionals, I don't know, I can't remember what it was called, but you would get through to another competition, um, which was, I think it was like four hours away from us and it would have been a stay away show. To this day, I still have never been to a stay away show because my parents back in the day would only take me somewhere for an hour because again, I had schoolwork, a younger brother, you know, all that kind of stuff, which is understandable, you know. We have a job as well. Yeah, also my parents have a job as well because horses is expensive. Um, but anyway, so I remember before my round going into this for the 85, they said to me, Esme, please. So I think two of my teammates went in before me. They both went clear and they said to me, Esme, just get Casper in deep, make him chip, make him get a pole because then we won't have to go to the competition. <laughs> <laughs> which is four hours away. <laughs> Dad's laughing in the background because like most Pony Club parents, you see them at shows and they're like, go faster, win. Like they're so competitive. And then my parents like, please get a poll. We don't want to go to the next round in like a different county. So I went round and I went clear and they were like, damn, we're gonna have to take her to this show. That's four hours away. Like we can't just say no if she's like qualified. But my mum was so happy because one of my teammates got a pole and she was the last one to go in. It was the last fence she got a pole and she felt so bad because she stopped our team from qualifying. But me, my mum and my dad, we were so happy. Like my mum and dad both went up to my teammate, my friend, because she knocked a pole and literally congratulated her because they were so happy that they didn't have to trailer the trailer all the way up. <laughs> four hours away so um that's another reason um why i haven't competed much um during my life so yep yeah, that is the end of that vlog i feel like we've been on a bit of a roller coaster t today guys we've seen some very old videos so um yeah it'll be interesting to see what videos i make so this was uh, yeah this was four or five years ago so it'll be interesting to see what videos I'm making in like five years time wow okay so that was a trip down memory lane for me I'm I wonder how many people have actually watched these videos before or watched them when I had YouTube because I think it was just really my friends and family or people that kind of knew me that subscribed to me back then but yeah, so <laughs> thank you so much everybody for watching today's video. Let me know out of all the videos I reacted to, which one you found the most entertaining. Um, also, if you want to, then be sure to watch some a few of my favourite videos that I'll leave a link to in the description below, you know, if you're bored and want to have a little binge watch. Um, thank you so much again for over 400,000 subscribers. Still blows my mind today. Thanks again for watching this video. If you're new or have not done so already, please like and subscribe as it really does help me out and I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.